Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another Planty video. I hope that you are all doing well. So for today's video, it's going to be Hoya focused and this is inspired by a comment that I got. Somebody asked if I could do a video of like my most recommended Hoya. I guess kind of like my top Hoya that I think everybody should try out. I should have screenshot the comment, but shout out to you if you're the person that left me that comment. So I've kind of taken that idea and ran with it a little bit. I've actually created several different categories that I'm going to be choosing my favorite Hoya for. So I'll, I'll tell you my categories. Okay, they're on my laptop here in front of me. So the first category is classics or like more common or available Hoya. Um, and for most of these, I only pick two, my two top Hoya per category. The next category is blooms. So Hoya to go for if you are interested in blooms. The next category is variegated Hoya. Um, the next category is ex extraordinary or unique looking Hoya. And then the last category is fast growing. So if you're looking for Hoya that are particularly fast growers. So I'm gonna share my top picks for, I guess, is there five categories? One, two, three, four, five. For those five categories, and then I'm also going to give you just some like general care tips slash my experience and products that I like to use in it, particularly for Hoya. So yeah, this is a video for all my Hoya heads out there. I didn't realize how much of a Hoya head I actually am until I made my Hoya collection video and I said that. I was like, I don't really think I'm that into Hoya, but then I have you know a whole bunch of different types of Hoya and people were leaving comments being like oh my goodness like you're I totally think of Hoyas when I think of you so I guess I'm more of a Hoya person than I thought I was I'm definitely more of a Hoya person in the summer because that's when I get the most blooms and I love when my Hoya bloom so much it makes me want like 100 more Hoya when they bloom but anyways okay so I guess we're just gonna hop right into it I'm gonna start off with my the two Hoya that I recommend for the classics category okay Miss just had her din din, so she's happy as a clown back there. Okay, so for my classic Hoyas, I know y'all have seen these ones a million times, but they're my favorites, so don't exit out of the video. I have more interesting ones coming up, but um, since we're starting out with the classics, this is my baby right here, my Hoya Compacta. Oh my goodness. Okay, every time I show her, she gets even bigger. This is my OG, my baby. I bought this when it was a very small little, it was probably like one piece this big in a four inch pot that I got at a big box store. And now it's turned into this. It just requires some patience, some love, and you too can grow your Hoya Compacta to be like this or even bigger and longer and better, which is my plan with this one. I want it to be even more full and longer. Now, I think that this is one of my favorites because I love trailing plants. So I especially love this one because it just really gives like that cool trailing, hanging down viney look. And a lot of Hoyas prefer to be trellised, but this one just does super well. I don't know if you, I don't know what would happen if you did trellis this. I mean, I suppose you could. I don't know if I've ever seen one trellised before. I always just see them like hanging down like this, but that might be interesting. I kind of want to look it up now. Um, if you have trellised your compacta, leave a comment down below. I found this Hoya to be so easy care and so tolerant. I've grown it in a variety of different locations. Uh, it does get like a decent amount of light. This lives in my windowsill, so it appreciates that. But other than that, it's honestly just patience. Sometimes Hoya can take quite a while to get going. So I've just had this for a few years now. That's why it's this long. And yeah, if you like look on Instagram, there's people with Hoya Compacta way bigger than this. So um, they can get quite massive. But yeah, she's bloomed for me before. She makes me so happy. And I just, I just have to put her into this category as one of my top picks. Okay, so my other pick for the classics category is another trailing one. So sorry, but I love trailing plants. I just think that they give such a cool vibe and you can do so much when it comes to styling in a, in a room, in your home. Um, so the next one for classics that I just had to choose is my Hoya Linearis. And I know I've shown this so much recently. Um, I am a little bit obsessed with it. And at the moment, I'm a little bit obsessed with creating a full pot of it. So this is what she's looking like so far. I just recently put these cuttings in about a week ago. So I wonder if they're like 
it honestly feels like they're rooting in there already like they're already i can't tug them out so that's awesome um but yeah so those ones are just getting established and then on this side these ones are all established and they are quite long as well i'm gonna be cutting this again i did just cut it last week but i am gonna be cutting it again because i do have these ones that are quite long this is almost touching the floor it hangs from my bed frame i have a canopy bed that I hang some of my trailing plants off of, um, which I love by the way, I do have a video on that also. Such a cool way to display plants, especially if you like trailing plants and you're renting so you don't want to put a bunch of like hooks in your ceiling and stuff. Um, but yeah, Hoya Linearis, it's just, it's a classic, okay? And it's so cool. The leaves are fuzzy when you look at them close up. Um, I know that these used to be like kind of uncommon, but now I feel like these are relatively available. Maybe not at in stores so much, but you can find these online super easily, which is why I am categorizing it in the classics. I just really don't think you can go wrong. They're very fast growing as well. Like I almost could have put this in the fast growing category because it always has new leaves coming out at the ends. Very easy to propagate, just a super tolerant plant. I've grown this in a variety of different conditions as well, including in the greenhouse cabinet. Now it's living out of the greenhouse cabinet and it's doing super well. So yeah, it's just a fabulous plant in my eyes. So yeah, had to pick it, definitely. This is probably one of my top three Hoya. Same with the Compacta. So I appreciate the really like cool, strange, bizarre Hoya. Like I love them, but if, I, if it really came down to it, the Compacta and the Linearis would be in my top three overall of Hoya for sure. So um, yeah, which is nice because they're available and you can find them and they're not super expensive. So the nice thing about a lot of commonly available houseplants, which definitely applies to those two, is that they don't really need any spe special growing conditions. They will thrive just in your home. So that's another thing just to note about those two. Two thumbs up from me. Okay, so the next category is blooms. So when I'm saying blooms is, I'm thinking more along the lines of plants, Hoyas that bloom frequently or easy to get to bloom. Now to me, there's one that immediately comes to mind and that is the Hoya Bella. These bloom like crazy. They grow like crazy as well. Like honestly, this could be in the fast growing category as well, but I just had to put it in the blooms one because they just, they're, forever spitting off clusters of blooms. I used to have a gorgeous pot of a green Hoya Bella. I got rid of it when I moved. I do have the variegated, both variegated versions, which have been honestly struggling for me for quite some time. I'll show them to you anyways though. Okay, so this lives in my greenhouse cabinet and I have both varieties in here, the inner and the outer variegated. And I'm pretty sure that what's been going on with these is mites and not like a regular spider mite, but it seems to be like a very tiny, might, um, I don't know if it's something that like Hoyas are prone to, but yeah, it's very bizarre. It's a very strange thing, but I've really been, so I've been doing my mite treatments and I think it is helping, but yeah, I've just been, it's been taking me quite a long time to get this Hoya on track to actually grow. So I haven't gotten any blooms or anything from the vari variegated version, but if you're looking for a Hoya to bloom, definitely get the green uh, Hoya Bella. It's gonna grow faster for you and probably bloom more than the variegated version anyways, just because variegated plants typically grow a little bit slower. Um, and I just, I can vouch for that green one. She's thirstier than most Hoya, so keep that in mind, but she will bloom like crazy for you. Such, such a beautiful Hoya. I honestly, I need just like a regular green one in my life again, because this is just like the heck. Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay, so the next one that I wanna recommend if you're looking for a Hoya that's going to bloom frequently or easily for you is, this is kind of a combo. Um, this is a Hoya Croniana that I have right here, Hoya Croniana Silver Splash, which just bloomed for me and it's working on another set of blooms right there for me. You can see the peduncle. Um, so uh, I'm dividing this between Hoya Croniana and Hoya Lacunosa, which are both very similar Hoya and the blooms even look similar as well. But I've heard that these are both very frequent bloomers and I believe it now that this has given me multiple uh, multiple budding peduncles and I've only had this for about a year now. Not a very big plant, it does grow quite quickly. Um, I got this as just like a very small little starter um, cutting. So it does grow quickly, but it's definitely definitely seeming to be an easy bloomer. 
and I just think that they're so beautiful. These come in multiple different varieties. I don't have a lacunosa, so I can't speak so much on that one, but I'm pretty sure that they're really easy to bloom, fast growing, like just similar to this one. I think that there's different varieties of that as well, but I know for the Croniana, there's a bunch of different varieties. There's like a super, super silver one, which, oh my goodness, I die for those. They're so gorgeous. Like the leaf is almost entirely silver. It's so pretty. There's also a black version. So it's just like a really dark leaf. Like there's a lot of different a lot of different options and variety which i just think is really cool you can trellis this or you can have it trailing it seems to be super happy for me just trailing which i'm very happy with i think af actually after this blooms i might um cut this and propagate just so i can create a fuller pot so that's probably going to be like a summer project for me but yeah really great bloomer as well i do have a third little bonus plant just for this category um and this isn't I've not I've not picked this one because of the frequency of blooms or the ease of bloom or anything but just based on the blooms themselves because I just think that they're the cutest things ever uh, and that is the Hoya caudata sumatra so this is mine it has never bloomed for me but I will have photos on the screen of what the blooms look like I love them because they're so fuzzy which is very like on brand for this plant because the new leaves come in very fuzzy the leaves do have a fine fuzz but when they are um like the mature leaves they're not like super they're not really fuzzy or anything they're more just like hard like this feels like a piece of cardboard but when the new leaves come in they're so fuzzy and fluffy and cute and same with the blooms so this is probably one of my hoya that i'm most excited to see it bloom one day i do have another one that's in a different category on this list that has like incredible blooms as well which i didn't even realize um, until I started looking looking it up. So I'll mention that when we get to it. But um, yeah, I just wanted to note the Hoya Karada Sumatra blooms because they're just so stinking cute. Okay, it was getting warm in here, which is rare. Um, but we are moving on to the variegated Hoya. So just my favorite variegated Hoya. Let's hop into the first one. Okay, so first place has to go to this one because I feel like I'm always talking about the variegation of this plant. This, first of all, oh my goodness. I, every time I look at this and especially every time I take it out and see it in the viewfinder, I'm always shocked at how big it is because I've had this for less than a year as well and I just got it from like a very tiny plant. I'll pop a picture on the screen of what it looked like, um, like close to around the time I got it, like a, a month or so after. Um, it's just exploded. This could go in the fast growing category too, which is surprising because it's so variegated, which is the reason it, I picked it for the variegated category. Um, I picked it because the like, type of variegation that is on this plant is so pretty it looks like a painting like this honestly looks like watercolor like it's so beautiful i think that this has like a similar type of variegation to the hoya australis lisa which i don't have in my collection but i've definitely admired in other people's photos and videos um so yeah i can just I can tell you that this variegation will stun you if you see it in person. I highly recommend getting this Hoya just because it's so pretty and it grows so fast. And yeah, it's probably, probably has the prettiest variegation in my whole Hoya collection. Like look how variegated the leaves are. It's so shocking that this plant grows so fast even though it's so variegated. And the new leaves come in very pink. Um, I don't know if you can see these little guys there very very pink and then they eventually fade down to the cream this one still has little little splashes of pink which is so cute it's just such a pretty plant and it's just been so easy going and so fast growing for me that i just i had to choose it for this category okay so the second one of course i couldn't not choose or talk about my hoya crimson queen Oh my gosh, she's massive. I can't even back up enough to have her um, fit in the, in the screen, but oh my goodness, she is so phenomenal. So I've had this for a few years as well, and as you can see, she is an absolute beast. She grows so much. She's so easygoing. Um, I've never even repotted her or anything. This is just the basket that I bought her in a few years ago. Um, 
she gives me tons of just like beautiful white leaves and they do die off eventually but it they stay for they stay for quite a while honestly like it takes a long time for them to die off she's so lush she's hanging once again she also lives on my bed frame and i just love seeing her trailing down she really requires like so little from me i probably water her once every four to six weeks um, because she's in a plastic pot and honestly like quite a dense soil mix um, but I'm just, you know, she's happy. So I'm just leaving her until, until I have to repot. But Hoya honestly can stay in the same pot for like years and years. So I'm not too worried about it. But yeah, and she's giving me just like massive growth these days. Like beautiful large leaves. Here's another really pretty one that this one is still like expanding and hardening off, but it's like a half moon it's so pretty she has some new growth coming in which of course is has like pink as well this is also known as Hoya tricolor which is what I purchased it as but it is a Hoya crimson queen and um, you can tell the difference between the Hoya crimson queen and the princess because the queen is very good on the outside so the phrase is the queen wears the crown and the princess wears the gown because the princess is variegated on the inside so most leaf is white and then it's green on the outsides just a little trick if you need a way to remember it look it's literally wrapping around my ear hello <laughs> yeah so she's my baby obviously i'm obsessed with her how could i not be um so i just had to feature her in this category okay so the next category is the extraordinary or unique category so i just wanted to choose hoya that we're just like a little bit more funky and different so the first one that i've picked for this category is hoya finley sonii so this is mine it really needs a trellis because as you can see it's shot out this vine is that roots yeah that's roots it shot out this vine and um given me these two brand new leaves which is very exciting and look how pretty they are they're so dark and shiny um but i know it would just be much happier with a trellis i can just like tell that this is a hoya that needs a trellis so um i will probably be making it, it one i do have some wire that i can use so I'll be doing that sometime soon but yeah the reason that I chose this Hoya is just because of the like prehistoric looking foliage now there's a couple Hoya that have like this kind of vibe um there's also the Callistophylla I believe which I do not have in my collection um yeah there's a few of them but the Finlay Sonii is the one that I have so that is the one that I'm sharing but I just had to throw in one of these really like Jurassic looking ones because it's just so bizarre and unique and um, I just feel like I needed at least one of them in my Hoya collection. Yeah, I love the veining. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I just can't imagine how cool this is gonna look when it is like a large full Hoya, um, hopefully on a trellis. This has been relatively easy for me to grow. It does live in my, in my um, I was gonna say Hoya Ikea cabinet, in my Ikea greenhouse cabinet and it's very happy in there. I don't know when I will be moving it out. I'm just gonna leave it in there for now. But my next step with this one is definitely going to be to get it a trellis. I'm probably just gonna do like the um, like horseshoe shape arch trellis situation. Has a really thick leaf, just like a really satisfying Hoya. I have no idea what the blooms look, on the, look like on this. I've never had it bloom before, but the foliage is striking enough that I'm not even really concerned about the blooms, but of course it would be very cool to have it bloom one day. So I hope it does. Um, and then the second one that I have to show you is one that I do not see very often. Um, and I didn't really know much about it until recently. I just had to look it up, but this is my Hoya Kaimuki. Okay, mine looks kind of funky because it's, I grew this back from, I think a one leaf cutting and it's just kind of like getting reestablished. So that's why it's just like kind of weird, but this is the newest set of leaves right here, which are just like so stunning. They came in so red you guys i'll insert a photo um <clears throat> i think i have like soil or perlite or something in my throat um yeah these leaves just came in like so incredible it was so striking in contrast with these green leaves up here and then the like dark dark red so they are just like fading to like a purpley green right now um so this hoya is actually a hybrid of um archie baldiana let me let me look it up because i don't want to mess it up 
Archie Boldiana, I think. Um, Archie, Archie Boldiana and Hoya McGilvery. And I don't have either of those Hoya. I didn't even know this was a hybrid until I looked this up the other day. Um, so I just think that that's really cool. And this has some phenomenal blooms, you guys. Like, oh my goodness, I had no idea. So now I'm like kind of shook and just like wondering if this is ever gonna bloom for me because I'll probably croak if that ever happens they can get massive like massive you guys I'll put some photos here on the screen but they can get like two or so inches uh large and that just blows my mind because typically Hoya blooms are like just small little clusters right so it's just so crazy when a Hoya um, produces large blooms so I partially chose this just for its like unique dark striking foliage um, and partially because of the crazy blooms which I don't know if I'll ever get but um, y'all know I'll be posting in the community tab if that were ever to happen also like I said I saved this from one leaf and I'm so glad that I did because I just don't really see this around I don't really see people posting it um, so I just feel like it's a little bit different and I'm just really excited to be growing it in my own home here. So yeah, Hoya Kaimuki. Hopefully one day I'll have her situated a little bit better and potted up nicely with a trellis and I'll be able to show her off a little bit better. I know she's a little willy nilly right now. Okay, so the last category is fastest growing Hoya. Now I've mentioned a couple already that I would consider very fast growing like the Hush Kaliana and the Hoya Bella. There are a lot of varieties of Hoya that I think are pretty fast growing, even though it's normally considered like a slower growing genus. Um, anyways, I'm going to be highlighting two that I have just found really took off for me. So the first one I'm going to talk about is my Hoya Sunrise, which I have been showing a few times within like the past few months because I just couldn't believe how much it was growing. This started off as just like honestly it was like this like just a small cutting um less than a year ago and it did take a couple of months for it to get kind of established but as soon as it got established it just like shot out so much new growth i couldn't even believe it and just like how dense the growth is too like i've never had this many leaves clustered onto a vine before it is so dense it's unbelievable this thing was putting out like 10 leaves at a time it was so crazy um so yeah Hoya Sunrise, it gets beautifully sun stressed as you can see on some of the leaves. These leaves are closest to the grow lights. This lives on the very top shelf in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet, so it's right under a grow light. And then the leaves that are trailing uh, are further away from the grow light, so they're mostly just green. This would be a plant, um, this would be a perfect Hoya to grow in a window, like hanging in front of a window off of like a curtain rod or from the ceiling or whatever have you, um, or just like placed somewhere that gets direct sunlight because it just sun stresses so beautifully and I think that would just look amazing. So yeah, definitely suggest that type of setup for this plant. I am gonna have to get out of the cabinet soon because mine is just like growing so much. So perhaps I will have this hanging or trailing from somewhere in my home. You can trellis it as well. But um, yeah, mine seems to be very happy trailing. So that's just, maybe I will trellis it. I don't know, I'm undecided honestly. This, I, like, I know I need to do something with it, but I'm undecided. So let me know if you have any suggestions down below in the comments of what I should do with this. Or should I top and prop? Because I really only have like a couple of vines coming out of the top there. So maybe I'll start with that and do that. Um, I also find that Hoya enjoy to be cut. Like do not, fear propagating your Hoya because it encourages new vines to come out and you will get a more lush plant in the long run. Anyways, yeah, this one just grew so fast and so thick and bushy, so I had to feature it in the fast growing section. Now the second one is my Hoya Walliniana UT152. Now I feel like I said this several times before, but I was so shocked at how fast this Hoya grew when I got it. And it was just like immediate, like there was no um, like recovery period after shipping or anything like that. It was just like immediately pushing out growth. I got this as again, a very small plant. Um, I've since up potted it a couple of times and now it's in this hanging basket. Um, so you can see, it has several vines. Now this plant I have propagated a couple of times and like given away cuttings and traded cuttings and whatnot. So it would be a little bit larger if I hadn't done that. 
but just believe me when I tell y'all like this thing grows like a beast I could not believe how fast this is growing I remember I had this in my cabinet for a very short time like probably only a few two or three maybe two a couple of months and it, ha it had just taken over the cabinet so I had to take it out and put it in this hanging basket but yeah it's such a cool Hoya really if you look at the leaves I'll show you these guys. It has very pretty veination. It's just like a really, a really gorgeous leaf with some light speckling. And these can get beautifully sun stressed as well. If you have this in a bright window or under some strong grow lights, let me see if I can find some sun stressed leaves. Here we go. This one is sun stressed. This must be close to my grow light, this section of the plant. Um, but it can get like this really dark purple look, which this is my favorite kind of look for this plant. Like that is just so pretty. It's another one under there as well. So I would definitely suggest giving this plant highlight if you do want the sun stressed kind of look. It's so pretty. Also a plant that bloomed for me right off the bat. Uh, I had only had this for a few months and it was still like a really small plant at the time and it gave me a bloom and it was just like so surprising. I was not expecting it to bloom so we'll see if it blooms again this year but that was really cool. Just like such an easygoing Hoya and also not like super common so it's a little bit different. Um, yeah I really like this one and it does live outside of the cabinet right now it just lives in my bedroom um, just to note that so I know that it does fine just in regular household conditions as well. Okay so those are my like top picks of Hoya. I hope you liked how I kind of separated it into different categories. There's just so many different like characteristics that people look for in Hoya. I thought that that would be a good way to do it. So really love, honestly I love all the Hoya that I have in my collection but um, yeah those are like some of my top top picks. Next I just wanted to talk a little bit about my experience of growing Hoya. When it comes to watering Hoya a lot of people go by the the general like rule of checking if the Hoya is like soft and bendable then you know it's thirsty and you can water it. Uh, in my opinion I find I like to water my Hoya a little bit before they get to that point. If you're already letting them get like so bone dry that they're bending you're gonna risk new growth dying off and your Hoya just could have a tougher time growing than if you are just watering it once the soil is completely dry. Like I pretty much water it like I water all of the rest of my plants just like any other tropical philodendron, pothos, whatever. I just wait until the soil is like pretty much completely dry and then I give it a thorough watering. Also especially important to keep your Hoya well watered when they are putting out peduncles or preparing to bloom. If they are underwater then there's a chance that that bloom is not going to fully come to fruition. So just a note, just a note about that because I know a lot of people say like Hoya don't need any water, wait until they're super soft. Kind of the same like I harp on this about my string of hearts because I feel like a lot of the time people underwater their string of hearts um, but I just find that Hoya need like maybe a little bit more water than people think. Also another general point, sometimes Hoya can take a long time to get established. I've had Hoya take like a couple of years to really start growing and then they'll just take off. Um, so, so sometimes it requires some patience. You can play around with like different conditions in your home, but honestly I just find that some of the varieties are like just really slow to get growing. Also something else that I've found, or sorry, something else that I've heard but I've also found to be pretty accurate is that I've heard that um, Hoyas that are further away from the light, so getting less light, will give you larger foliage, larger leaves, and more dark foliage. Um, so they'll just be like a little bit more, just like more green, I guess. So if you're wanting really large lush foliage, then maybe give yours a little bit less light. But if you are wanting blooms and sun stressing, obviously, then you're going to want to just blast it with light, give it a lot of light, uh, and then you're going to be more likely to get more blooms. I found that to be true in my experience so y'all can let me know if you agree or not. Now for the end of this video I just wanted to talk about a couple of products that I really love specifically for my Hoya. Um, so I guess I'll mention quickly for potting mix I just use my like general DIY potting mix that I've shared before on my channel. I have videos on it. Um, it's pretty much the same potting mix I use for all my plants. So I don't do anything special there and they seem happy. Um, they also love being fertilized. I fertilize both in the soil with like my regular fertilizer that I give to all of my plants and I also fertilize um, foliarly through the foliage by spraying it with this um, miracle Grow Orchid Mist. This is actually refilled with a batch that I made myself. I'm doing like DIY Orchid slash Hoya Mist now. 
but it's essentially the same thing. It's just so I can refill and I don't have to keep purchasing this over and over again. But Hoyas love being sprayed with this. I swear if you have a Hoya that's not growing or Hoya that you really want to bloom, just spray this like once a week, once every two weeks in the evening so that it's not gonna get burnt. Um, yeah, this works wonders, honestly, it's so good. I uh, showed how I made this in my recent plant chores video. So I'll link that if you wanna go check it out. Yeah, I feel like they really can tolerate a lot of fertilizer because I really just lay it on them. Another product um, that I use like mostly for my Hoyas are trellises. So you can buy really cool trellises. I have some that I absolutely love. I have like a snake one and a moon one. Um, yeah, I have several trellises that I just love for my Hoya, um, but I also just have wire that I bought from Home Depot that you can just make your own, which is what I did with my Hoya Matilde. I need to play around and get better and try to make a couple more, but I just made this like circular trellis that I have my Hoya Matilde on. A lot of Hoya love to have support. They want something to climb. Sometimes they'll shoot their tendrils out and just like grab onto a random thing, like your blinds or cords or whatever you have around because they want to grab onto something and then they will push out leaves from their vines. So if your Hoya is like sending its tendrils out, then give it a trellis, give it something to climb and it will love that. Also, another thing I was just gonna mention to go along with that are plant clips. So I have these little dragonfly ones, which I'm literally obsessed with right now. They're so cute uh, that I'm using to attach my Hoya to trellises. Before I wasn't even using anything to clip them on. I was just like winding it around, but I just think it's like a super cute touch. Not the most necessary thing in the world. And you could just use any old clip or you could use like plant Velcro or whatever you like, but I've just been loving those cute ones recently. And I think that that's pretty much it. It's gone so dark outside. I feel like I'm just like, the video is getting darker by the minute here. So I'm going to wrap it up. I hope that you guys enjoyed this Hoya themed video. Give it a big thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more planty content. Also, if you have any questions regarding anything I said or any comments, just leave them down below in the description box or in the description box, oh my goodness, in the comment section. <laughs> and I would be happy to chat with you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. I'm